Warzone 2 Season 1 Reloaded is finally here, and so I've got for you guys an updated settings video to ensure that you're maximizing your FPS and visibility while playing on PC in Almazra. So starting off in the display tab of the graphics settings, we're going with display mode, full screen exclusive. This means we're going to get the best input latency possible. We're not having anything else rendered in the background whilst the game's running. It puts everything essentially on pause, gives as much priority to the game as possible. Display monitor, very simply set it to your monitor. You'll know it's on the right monitor because you'll see it in front of you doesn't need much explanation. Display adapter, ensure you've got the correct GPU set here. Most of you guys will only have one GPU anyway, so you don't need to worry. Screen refresh rate and display resolution. You should be able to just select these auto settings here. Just for due diligence, I've selected the exact ones that I want, which do match the auto ones, but this will give you the correct refresh rate and resolution for your monitor natively. You don't want to change them here. Dynamic resolution, we want to keep this off. There's far better ways of gaining FPS through many other means. Maybe if you're on a really old system, this could be quite useful, but for most people, keep it off. Aspect ratio, either set this to automatic or to the specific aspect ratio of your monitor. Both should have the same result. I know my monitor is a 16 by 9 monitor. Most of yours will be too, so either will do the job. VSync gameplay and menus, the only advantage of having these on is you get less screen tearing, especially if you're on lower refresh rate monitors, but it adds a hell of a lot of input lag and basically makes the game unplayable in a lot of scenarios so make sure to keep those both off for the custom frame rate limit a lot of people will put this on unlimited but that's not actually what you want to do you want to put this on custom and then click show more because you get access to three custom frame rate limits for gameplay i've always had the best results just shoving this all the way to the right this is essentially like running unlimited for the gameplay i'm not really being limited because i'm never hitting 300 fps anyway and this way no matter how my fps fluctuates i'm never getting capped some people get better input latency by capping this at their monitor refresh rate so for me that'd be 240 for you guys it could be 144 or it could even be 60. It's gonna be a bit of a personal preference thing here I would play around with this see which of those kind of things work out either setting it to unlimited essentially you know all the way to the right or capping it to your refresh rate of your monitor and see which one feels better I can't figure it out from your exact system because it's going to be different for everyone then menu custom frame rate limit I limit this to 100 so that when I'm in the menus I'm still getting a fairly smooth experience. I find that capping this at something like 60 makes the mouse feel really, really weird. Um, but putting it at 100 keeps it smooth, but it doesn't use up loads of system resources. It doesn't make my whole computer feel really, really sluggish and uh, just running at full power for no reason. Then out of focus frame rate limit, we're pushing that even further by bringing this all the way down to 30 FPS. When I alt tab out the game and I'm doing something, I'm checking something up, especially as a content creator, I'm checking out things on my other monitor. I don't want the game to be lagging out my whole computer when I've alt tabbed. I don't need it to be running at that crazy amount of FPS. So putting it at 30 is a good thing and I'd recommend you do it too. Okay, restart shader optimization. This is a useful setting. If you have any problems, you have any random stuttering in the game, come in here, run this. It will do the shader reinstall thing, the percentage ticking up to 100% and it fixes a lot of problems. Then shader optimization. This is just a thing which you can open up and it shows you how shader optimization works. It's not a setting. It's a bit weird that it's in here, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Display gamma. You want to put this to 2.2, assuming you're on a monitor. If you're playing on a TV, you've got your PC linked up to a TV, then put this to 2.4. For brightness, ignore this whole not visible, barely visible thing. Just put it on 55. That slight boost from the default of 50 to 55 really helps alleviate some of the visibility problems you might have in dark areas of Almazra. And I did this in Warzone 1, I'm doing it in Warzone 2. It's a massive thing that I recommend you guys do. And then HDR, most people will have this off anyway because they won't have a HDR monitor. However, even if you do have a HDR monitor, which I do, I still keep this off because I think that the colors and the lighting is actually balanced better not running HDR in this game and I get better visibility overall. Moving into the quality tab now, quality presets, you can just leave this at whatever. It's going to change to custom when we start changing everything else anyway. Render resolution, you can turn this down from 100% at the end of all these settings if you really need a boost of in FPS and you can't get it anywhere else. But for now, keep it at 100%. This way you're pumping out the exact native resolution we set in the display area. For upscaling slash sharpening, this is actually kind of weird because it's two completely different bits of technology we can select here. Everything from AMD FSR up is essentially super sampling we are taking the game we're lowering the resolution to get fps and then we're upscaling it to improve that sharpening overall and make it not look like we've downscaled the resolution then you've got fidelity fx cast which is purely a sharpening technology and it's very very good i'd recommend most people turn this on and then click show more and put the fidelity fx cache strength to 70. this does have an impact on fps but for most people just looking for a quick fix to sharpening this is really 
really good. For anti-aliasing, you can't turn it off in this game, still annoying. So we have to pick between normal and filmic SMAA T2X. Essentially, if you just want pure FPS, you're just needing as much FPS as possible, you're on a lower end system, choose SMAA T2X. It gives you the better FPS. However, filmic, whilst taking a little bit of FPS off, it completely gets rid of this weird shimmering shadows issue where it looks like you've got all this grain all over all the walls. Personally, I refuse to play with that on because it looks horrendous, especially for being a content creator. So filmic SMAA T2X, if you can afford the small amount of FPS you'll lose, run that. If you need FPS, SMA T2X is your only option. Anti-aliasing quality, uh, put this on normal. The difference in FPS between uh, low and normal is very, very little, if any, uh, but you do gain a nice boost in the overall clarity of the anti-aliasing. Going any higher than that, you start to lose some FPS, which we don't want. Now, how easy it is to set up the video memory scale option is going to depend on whether you have Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, you've, you know, you've bought the game, or whether you only have the free-to-play Warzone 2 component. If you only have Warzone 2, you don't have Modern Warfare 2, then you're just going to have to play around with this setting and find what gives you the best results. It's not the case that shoving this all the way to the right is just going to give you loads more FPS. If anything, putting this all the way to the right when you don't need to can cause you to get a lot more stuttering than is needed in the game. So you're just going to have to play around and figure out what, what works for you. If you have Modern Warfare 2, with the benchmarking tool built in, which you can access from the menu, you just go into the multiplayer area and there's a benchmark area. Put this to 90 to start off with, then go and set up all of the other settings as I do in this video, run the benchmark, and you will get at the end of the benchmark a, a stat which shows you what percentage of your GPU VRAM was used during the benchmark. You then just need to set the video memory scale here as near to that value as you can. For me, mine was actually slightly lower than 50%. So I put it all the way down to 50, and this has completely reduced a load of stuttering that I was having previously from my GPU likely being overworked for no reason. And it's just improved my gameplay dramatically. For your texture resolution, I'd recommend that you put this on low. Even if you have a lot of VRAM in your system, I, like I do, I've got eight gig of VRAM, I actually still feel FPS drop drops going to normal or too high, which I don't usually get in games. Usually texture resolution is not a FPS hog, but it seems to have an effect in this game. Low looks pretty much just as good as normal in terms of how the textures look. Very low looks really, really bad and doesn't really gain you much FPS. So I find low to be the best balance across the board. Then texture filter anisotropic. You want to put this to normal. This is going to be how do textures look from an angle. Uh, having this on normal looks absolutely no different from high. There's no visual fidelity difference in between the two um, and you might gain a slight amount of FPS, but if there's two settings that look the same, choose the lower one in general. Nearby level of detail, put this to low. Distant level of detail, put this to low and clutter draw distance, put this to short. All three of these, tested them all out. Can't find any real scenarios where any of these have much effect. You might get a couple of tiny rocks or blades of grass that pop in at a different distance, but really you can gain a decent amount of FPS. You know, we're talking five to 10 FPS by just turning this all to their lowest values and you won't notice any difference visually. Particle quality, this is gonna be mainly uh, the quality of how explosions and thermite grenades like here all look on your screen. You can tell the difference, going from high to low here, but you can gain a really nice benefit in terms of FPS. So it's definitely worth turning this to low for the amount of explosions you might get on the screen. You don't get that many. Particle quality level, this kind of goes hand in hand with particle quality. I would just recommend you drop this all the way to the lowest because we're already running low particle quality. Particle quality level, we can just chuck that lowest as well. Bullets, impacts and sprays, personal preference. I like to have these on. It has no effect on FPS, so choose what you want. Shader quality, this is a really, really important one. You need to put this on low. There was a problem before where having this on low made all of the camos, especially the gold camo, look horrific. So people were turning this up. That's been fixed. There's no problem with that now. And you gain massive amounts of FPS from dropping this down. This is one of the biggest FPS hogs. So make sure you've got this on low. Tessellation. It doesn't matter what I put this on. I cannot see a difference. This look on the right here, this whole thing where the floor looks really flat and then it looks really, really kind of detailed on the right. I'm not seeing that, especially in Warzone 2. So I've just put it to off. It changes nothing in terms of visual fidelity and I might be gaining a few FPS. 
Not very much more I can say on that one. Terrain Memory. We've actually found that by putting this on max, you can gain some really nice improved textures in the game. It kind of turns your low textures up here into medium or even high looking textures on a lot of surfaces. It's kind of ridiculous. And uh, I, assuming you're running eight gig of RAM in your system, which most of you should be, I don't even know how this game would run without it. You'll be fine putting this on max. You won't feel any drop in FPS. On demand texture streaming keep this to off. We do not want to be streaming high quality textures into our game while we're playing. That's just a big no-go. Do not turn that on. Streaming quality doesn't seem to have much effect. It seems to be uh, changing the kind of level of detail of things at distance. If you're looking at something from really far away across the map, it can improve the level of detail, but it's a very small, if any, difference. So I'd keep it on low. Volumetric quality, it's up there with shader quality in terms of how much FPS it can take. It's a massive FPS hog. It kind of chooses how good fog and clouds and mist looks. Just put it on low. You're not going to notice much difference when you're actually playing around in game and you will notice the FPS difference. Then deferred physics quality and water caustics. I'll kind of bundle these together because it's all to do with quality of water. Make sure you've got these both set to off. These can use up quite a lot of FPS. There's a lot of water on our Masra, and even when you're not too near it and you're looking at it from a distance, these things are working over time. So keep them off. You don't need the water looking crazy good. Shadow map resolution, bit of a personal preference one here. I think that in a similar way to textures, the low and normal shadows look very similar, but you lose FPS going up to normal. Very low shadows look pretty damn terrible, so I don't recommend you run those. And then anything above normal is just a big FPS hog. So low is the best balance across the board. Then screen space shadows. This is all to do with the shadows um, locally on your character. So when you're holding your gun, how do you get shadows cast onto your hands and stuff? It's a little bit of an FPS hog as shadows are, and it's not useful in any way. It doesn't help out in any way, so keep it off. Then we've got spot shadow quality, which is all to do with these shadows that come off of small light sources in the game not useful to us so we keep it to low for spot cash you need to run this at high if you run this on low or medium you are risking way more stuttering and significantly more crashing in warzone 2. this is probably one of the most important settings i will recommend to you today putting this on high has limited my stuttering and along with that video memory scale thing i did at the top i basically never crash now in the game and I never stutter either apart from if my system starts playing up. It's nothing to do with COD at that point, it's just my system. Put this on high. Then particle lighting, keep it on low. It's kind of similar to other lighting and shadows bits. It doesn't really do much so we just want to put it to the lowest setting. Ambient occlusion, it can make the game look a bit prettier. It can make some of those shadows in those uh, kind of edges and on the corners of objects look a bit better but it's not saying we need so we'll keep it off screen space reflections not a useful setting there aren't many useful reflections in the game it's not like you're going to look in a reflective object and notice an enemy or anything it's just sort of how lighting bounces off of objects keep this off static reflection quality similar thing put this to the lowest setting and then weather grid volumes yeah it's we don't care about weather effects applied to dynamic objects. I don't even know really what this means, but just keep it off. Now onto NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, probably one of the most misunderstood settings. A lot of people will just shove this on on plus boost because it sounds like the best. All you need to do is read this on the right here and you'll understand how you need to set this. If you are in a CPU bound case, i.e. you've got an older CPU and you've got a nice strong GPU, which a lot of people probably have, and a lot of people in their gaming PCs have these setups where they have really strong GPUs and their CPU is a bit older because they don't need it as much. Uh, in that situation, on plus boost is going to give you better overall performance. However, if you're someone like me who has a decently strong CPU as well as a decently strong GPU kind of working in tandem with not as much bottlenecking happening, you've got kind of an even playing field, then on is going to work better for you. Now, you might be in a situation where you go, I don't know which one of those works best for me. Just try each of them out in individual games and just see which one works better for you. Don't assume that on plus boost is going to be the better because on might work out better for you as it does for me. 
depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain. Turn those all to off or zero. These are all superfluous, kind of horrible effects that make the game look cinematic, but really it just completely clouds your vision, makes visibility terrible. Not something we want to have on. And lastly, the view tab. Field of view, put this all the way to 120. In other Call of Duty titles, I would still have recommended you to put it all the way to the right, but I would give you the disclaimer that it can affect a frame rate, it can lower the frame rate because you're showing more on screen. For whatever reason, having this on 120 in this game actually helps FPS for a lot of people. Potentially people might think it's because the things in the center of the screen actually seem to look like they're further away and so they're being rendered in with a lower level of detail or something like that. That's just a theory, but overall there in this game, there is no reason to not have 120 FOV set to get the maximum amount of information when you're playing the game. ADS FOV, you wanna put this to affected. It helps with visual recoil in general in the game. Then weapon field of view, put this to wide. These two together, I've mentioned them in my settings you need to change video. It just overall helps with visual recoil a lot in the game, which is massive in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 because the guns kick all over the place. Then third person field of view, just max this out as well if you're playing third person and vehicle field of view is gonna be personal preference to you guys. First person and third person camera movement, put these to least. We want the least shake as possible when we're playing. Third person ADS transition, personal preference if you're playing third person and default spectator camera. I put this to game perspective so that when I die eventually, which does happen a decent amount, and I spectate my teammates, I'm looking at down the barrel of their gun like I'm playing rather than doing that over the whole, uh, over the helmet camera thing, which looks kind of terrible. And there we go, guys. Updated settings for Warzone 2 Season 1 Reloaded. This should give you the best overall balance of FPS and visibility in the game. It should make it run nice and smooth. If you're having any problems, any queries, leave them in the comments down below. If you haven't got any problems, or even if you have, please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos coming very soon from me. It really helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.